Hello, it's Scott Manley here. So I am on vacation and uh, I figured that I would try and fill this vacation with some vlogs, you know, just talking at the camera thing about interesting stuff. And obviously today everyone said, hey, can you tell us about this whole Mars water thing that ESA has just announced? So yeah, their announcement is that they think they found a subsurface aquifer about uh, 1.5 kilometers underneath the surface, about nine degrees from the North Pole. This is a lake potentially about 12 kilometers across. They don't know how deep it is, but the reason they know about it is because it generates really powerful radar reflections from an instrument called MARSIS. That's the Mars, uh, what is it? Mars Advanced Radar for Subsurface Ionospheric Image, or sounding, sounding, there we go. So that's on board Mars Express that launched in 2003. Now, it'd been orbiting Mars, and a few years into the mission, they started to see uh, some very powerful reflections. What Mars does, actually, is it shoots low-frequency radio waves, and these penetrate into the surface, and they will bounce back. Some of them go down several kilometers, but uh, this one was getting a very powerful reflection, uh, but, you know, one and a half kilometers deep. And initially, they started to think this was an instrument error, because they would see them on some orbits, but not on other orbits. And it took them a while to figure out that the instrument was actually averaging the results it was getting before sending them back. So they had to reprogram it to actually store the raw data when they were passing over the interesting areas. And when they did that, they began to see that there was a consistent bright spot about 20 kilometers across, nine degrees from the North Pole. So that's pretty darn significant. Now, it's not just the radar brightness that, uh, you know, makes this look like a lake. Obviously, being a lake may, would make it flat, but this would be something under underground. Even if you've got a saturated area of, um, you know, soil, then the water will try to find its level, so it will have a sort of flat surface regardless. But uh, the strength of the reflection implies that it's water. And because of the expected temperature, it would have to be very salty water. Otherwise, it wouldn't be liquid. If it was frozen solid, it wouldn't generate this uh, this data. So, yeah, that's a really interesting observation, but it's not guaranteed just yet. They've certainly looked at it hard. There is another uh, instrument on another spacecraft. I forget the instrument, but I think it's called SARAD, uh, which is it's in a U.S. instrument, and it hasn't been seeing these reflections. Its radar uses different frequency ranges, so it's entirely possible that uh, something peculiar makes it less likely, or it turns out that they need different processing to bring it out. Uh, obviously, this will be investigated, but the team behind this, I mean, they worked for about five years looking at this before they finally said, okay, we're pretty sure it's water. They tried to eliminate it. They tried to kill the result, as they say, which is you know, what you do as a good experimentalist right you try to make sure there's nothing else that could explain this before making a big announcement like a lake you know 12 kilometers across 1.5 kilometers deep now we won't know for sure whether this is the thing for a long time first of all yes other spacecraft are going to be looking at this but it's underground so most instrumentation can't find it you know mars is dry it's very dry and it took a long time for various spacecraft to find evidence of water on Mars. We have found it. We found ice that evaporated near the pole. We found evidence that uh, we found evidence of very slow flow, briny flows, perhaps on uh, you know on the walls of canyons. Um, we've obviously detected it in the air, but we haven't found large bodies of water like this. So this is really exciting. Having said that, I'm not sure what kind of instrument would be ideal to look at it. Certainly, you're not going to be sending any spacecraft down to it. It's far too deep. Your insight isn't going to go... <laughs> insight isn't even going to get 1% of the way to the depth that this thing would require to get there. So, uh, yeah, getting one and a half kilometers deep into Mars is quite complicated. I, I saw this and somebody else was like, well, we can test Europa submarines here. It's like... Yeah, no, no, you're going to have to get through a lot of rock before you, can, <laughs> before you can get there. No, it's really excited. It really, really exciting, and it is near a polar area. I think what the immediate effect will be is that these areas will be declared especially high protection zones. So 
uh, spacecraft that go, probably no spacecraft will be allowed to land there until uh, we get a better idea on how to, you know, determine whether Martian life ever existed or anything. Anyway, yeah, looking forward to seeing what happens there and uh, hoping that I will continue to do this throughout the entire trip. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.